This is the sermon for October 9th, 2022, and I'm going to read from Luke 17. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. <clears throat> Well, as a teenager involved in Young Life, uh, you know, it was a discipleship group and we were separated, girls and boys, and I liked that. I liked having a woman leader and, and girls together. And it was in high school and I really enjoyed it. But at one point I got one of those little mustard seed necklaces. It almost, it's a, it's a round, um, it's a globe sort of glass with a, uh, trim around it that holds it in place and it has a little tiny mustard seed um, sealed in it. Uh, many of you might have had it at some point. And I don't even know if it was a mustard seed and who knows there's a lot of controversy over what a mustard seed is in the time of Jesus. So who knows. But the idea was to remind you of this passage. If you have faith the size of a tiny of this tiny mustard seed, Jesus said, you could uproot a huge tree and throw it in the ocean. This is one of those very odd stories. Uh, like the one, there's a story of Jesus and the disciples walking along and, and he wants figs. Jesus wants figs and he stops at a fig tree and there were no figs. It wasn't the season for figs. And he cursed the tree and the tree died. The tree withered and died. Very strange. I think... Uh, those stories might have made sense in the context that they had uh, when they were first put down or first told, but we lost the context somehow and we're not sure what it was. <clears throat> so it's okay to shrug when you come to a passage that you don't really understand. There's plenty to work with that we do understand. And I came to a new insight on this passage from Luke 17 uh, through Nadia Boltz Weber. She's one of the preachers and theologians and she writes books and I like reading her. So <clears throat> why would you want to uproot a tree and order it to be planted in the ocean? That really doesn't make any sense at all. And some wit commented um, that when Jesus asked Bartimaeus, which Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus, I talked about him a couple weeks ago, and the parade stopped and Jesus had him called over and he came over and Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And then Jesus waited until Bar Timaeus would say what he wanted. And he, all he wanted was to have his sight restored. But some wit commented he could have asked for a garment with a pocket that just produces silver coins over and over and over again. You know, if you have magical thinking, you can do... You can ask for anything, right? And so he wanted his sight back, which is how you expect the story to go. But why would Jesus say you could, if you had faith the size of a tiny mustard seed, you could tell that tree to uproot itself and be planted in the ocean? I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't really make sense. Why not bring about peace on earth? Why not? <laughs> You know, in um, Girl Talk, God Talk, we were exploring a list of things, up to 10 things, that we would do if we knew we couldn't fail. And people came up with beautiful, beautiful responses, really to improve humanity, to improve the world. And I came up with really fun things that I'd, I'd love to do if I knew I couldn't fail. I would like to learn to roller skate. Um, I really couldn't earlier in my life, and maybe I could now. And so things like that would be so much fun. And so you can play with little things, or you can want big things. They're both good. Um, I would learn. I would love to learn how to finger paint and do a good job at it if I knew I couldn't fail. So have fun with the question. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And Jesus is saying to the disciples who want their faith increased, he says, oh, if you just had the tiniest amount of faith, you'd be good to go. And we often hear that as a condemnation. It's not been one of my favorite passages. In fact, I didn't know what to do with it. 
And so some people read that and feel like a failure. They want more faith so that they can do more good in the world or to know that they won't fail. And so this, uh, this, this passage is so interesting. Nadia Boltzweber uh, posited, she suggested that um, they were asking for more faith and Jesus instead said, your faith is the size of a tiny mustard seed. And you know what? It's enough. It's perfect. And I love that uh, interpretation of this passage because um, what we have is enough. What we have is enough. That's grace. That is grace in action. And you know, there's so much hurt in the world and people pray, if only I had enough faith, I could pray for healing for this person and I would get the answer that I want to my prayers. And there's tremendous sadness and loss when we pray with all of our hearts. We pray with all of our faith and we don't get what we asked for. Jesus is saying, you have enough faith. You don't need more faith. You don't need more discipline in your spiritual life, although that never hurts. But Jesus is saying, the faith you have right now, as tiny as it is, is enough. And God answers with grace. And sometimes we don't understand that. We definitely don't understand that. I, I've struggled. I often think I don't have adequate faith. I doubt. I struggle just like anyone who's honest about it. I have no idea how to pray except to cry out with desperation when I want what I want. And when I want something good that benefits someone else, let's say, and I cry out with faith. It's a tiny amount of faith. And Jesus is saying, it's enough. It's enough. And I like that reframing of this passage. What kind of questions do you bring to God? Is it okay to feel distant from God when you're struggling with something or you're going through a hard time? Is it okay to feel distant? Jesus says, that tiny amount of faith that you have because you stay engaged, that's enough faith. I love that. What if I'm not sure what I believe? Life is changing. The world is changing. The church is changing. What if I don't know what I believe? Is that okay? Jesus says, that tiny amount of faith you have that keeps you engaged, it's enough. It's enough. Or sometimes we think maybe God is weak and powerless. A nice God, but not powerful. Because if God were powerful, then we would get the answers to prayer that we want. And so, and unfortunately, there's a lot of bad theology that says, I can praise God because my house was spared in the storm. I'm real sorry for those other houses, but I can praise God because God answered my prayer and my house wasn't destroyed. I always say, what about the other ones? I want to know. And Jesus says, you don't always get what you want, but your faith is enough because you are engaged. So, if you have faith the size of the tiniest mustard seed, it's enough. Jesus is not scolding them for not having enough faith. Jesus is rejecting the idea that you need more faith to be more effective or to get the answer to your prayer. And when I study the Bible, which I've done for a long time, what I see is grace over and over and over again. And in this passage, Jesus saying, the faith you have, tiny as it is, is enough. In fact, it's perfect. That's an upside down um, thing that Jesus is telling us. It's an upside down truth. We always think we have to oomph up more faith. And Jesus is saying, nope, nope. What you have right now in this moment is perfect. It's perfect. The, Jesus, uh, the disciples doubted themselves just like we do. And they asked Jesus, increase our faith. Yeah, that's a natural prayer. You know, help me be more disciplined in my spiritual life. Help me pray more effectively. Help me get what it is I long for. Because you heal that blind man. And we want that kind of faith. And if we're honest with God, Jesus says the faith you have is enough. 
If we're honest with our struggles, we are engaged with God and with one another. And Jesus is saying, that's enough. That's enough. For people who go through serious illness or grief, or they're overwhelmed by things, life is really tough at times. What if Jesus told you, you have already the perfect amount of faith? That would be encouraging. That would be beautiful. A lot of people think, oh, if, I, if only I followed the rules perfectly and I was perfect in my faith, then I would get what I wanted. And Jesus says, no, the amount of faith you have is enough right now. So Nadia Boltzweber encourage us, encourages us to think about the things that we do that are grounded in faith. And she suggests that if you dream about a future that is good for your children, that's a form of faith. If you're moved by the faith of your grandparents or your mentors or your forebears or the people who built these churches, if you're moved by that faith, then you're involved in faith. If you have doubts, that's also a form of faith because you're engaged in the questions. Do you hold love in your heart when someone you know is suffering and you're standing by and you can't fix it? If you hold love in your heart for them, that's faith. And Jesus is saying, that's enough faith. Do you notice when the sky is bright blue? And I got to hear sandhill cranes. I went out to Niger and wetlands and I got to hear the sandhill cranes. And they're so interesting. And I'm grateful to God. I have enough faith because I can listen to the sandhill cranes and be excited about how amazing creation is, even with all the struggles that are there. Do you see the inherent dignity of other human beings, no matter how different they are from you? That's also a form of faith. Have you asked someone to pray for you because you are really struggling? That's also a form of faith. Is there a feeling of gratitude in your life for anything at all? Anything? Do you have gratitude? That's also faith. Do you ever tell God off because you're angry? When you're honest with God, that's also a form of faith. And there's a, there's a name for that in the Bible. When you tell God off because you're angry, because things are too tough altogether, that's called a lament. And many of the, the Psalms are forms of lament. All of Lamentations is lament people being honest with God in the toughest times, that's also a form of faith. Their faith is enough, as tiny as it is. No matter what we bring to God, it's enough. We're engaged with God and with one another. And that's enough. That's the beauty of faith. And Jesus says, it's enough. In fact, it's more than enough. It's perfect. Amen.